there. Come on, you gotta press today. You gotta press today. There's a deliverance in your press today. Come on, you press. stop until you get there today there's a press in the Holy Ghost today there's a press in another realm today Everything that the devil is birthing, we catch it now at the last 
water. We rebuke it now. We rebuke it now. In the name of Jesus, we bind his hand. We bind his feet. We cancel his contract. Come on, somebody. Well out now. We rebuke you now. We rebuke you now. The blood is against you. The blood is against you. We go into the pit of hell. We take the keys from you. We strip you of your power. We speak to you now. Every spirit of darkness. We command you now to take your hands off of our families now. We command you now to cease from your assignment. Every demonic spirit. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. We rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it out of the womb. We rebuke it now. We rebuke prostate cancer in the name of Jesus. We speak to you now. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, give it to us. 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 We got to have it. 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 We rebuke every sickness. We rebuke every disease. Come on, people of God. Come on, break it. Break every sickness now. Break every disease now. In the name of Jesus. Break it now. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. You got to press today. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Give it to us now, God. Give it to us now. We take authority. We take authority over every sickness today. We take authority over every disease today. We take authority over cancer today. We take authority over AIDS today. We 
take authority over tuberculosis today. We take authority over heart condition today. We take authority over it now. We take authority over every mind condition. We take authority over tumors. We take it up. We rebuke it up. We drive it out by the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Come on, you can't stand there looking at me. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We gotta have the power. Yes, Lord. We can't pretend to pray. Yes, Lord. We can't let other people pray for us. Yes, Lord. Duncan Williams can't do it for us. Yes, Lord. Juanita Burnham can't do it for us. God, charge us. Charge us in our belly. Charge us, God. Give it to us. Give it to us. Come on, shout for power. Shout for power. Shout for power. You too weak, Zion. Shout for power. You too weak. The Holy Ghost says you too weak. Shout for power. Power. Give it to us, God. Give it to us, God. Give us your prayer assignment. Give it to us, God. We bind the hand of North Korea. We bind the hand of North Korea. We bind the hand of North Korea. We bind it now. Shut it down, God. Cause it to malfunction. In the name of Jesus. Shut it down, God. Don't let them get ahead of your schedule. God, you got a schedule. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. Because if you don't pray, one accident can wipe out California. If you don't pray, it can wipe out Hawaii. We bind the spirit of Kim. We bind him in the name of Jesus. We confuse his plan. We hold to his attack. It's a trick in the spirit. We see it and we know it. We bind it now. Hold on, double shut up. Yes, hold on, double shut up. Hold on, double shut up. Come on, I need 33 people. I need 33 people to travail in the Holy Ghost right now. I need 33 people to travail as hard as you can. Hold on, double shut up. Hold on, double shut up. Hold on, double shut up. Come on, you world changers. We are world changers. We can alter the course of warfare. We can speak it in the atmosphere. And we can alter the course of China. Oh God. Oh God. Give it to us, 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 God. Give us your prayer assignment. Give it to us, God. 
We pray for President Bush. We bind the hand of the enemy. Not in his flesh, God. Let him make no decision in his flesh, God. But God, you steering this thing. God, you guiding this thing. God is according to your timetable. God, keep it on course. In the name of Jesus. Keep it on course. In the name of Jesus. Keep it on course, God. In the name of Jesus. The enemy is trying to come in and speed up the process to confuse your plan. But we halt it now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Help me to bail today. Yes, Lord. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, the Lord of all shall I have you. He saw the love of the Lord. He said that he hated him. He saw the love of the Lord. God, we pray for DMX. God, we pray now. Come on, saints. That's our prayer assignment. Come on, break it. We break the spirit of drugs. We drive it out of his body now. We break the spirit of confusion. We button the spirit of insanity. We drive you out with the blood of Jesus. We speak to you, spirit. You spirit of insanity. You spirit of lunatic. You spirit now. You spirit of suicide. We cut you off at the path. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We claim his soul. We claim his spirit. We claim his mind. He will preach the gospel. We prophesy in the spirit. We throw him to the spirit realm. We throw him on course. We bind up the hand of the enemy. We snatch him out of darkness. We call Satan to take your hands off now. In the name of Jesus. Come on here somebody. Father, we don't see the victory. We see the victory for Whitney Houston. We see it coming. We see it coming. Can I get somebody to praise him? Can I get somebody to praise him? We see it coming. Can I get somebody to praise him? We've been praying for her for over a year. Can I get somebody to praise him? Come on, let's praise him. That God will pull her on through. Let's praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, people of God. I need soldiers. I need warriors. I don't need people that want to be cute in prayer. I need somebody to shout until you feel her spirit charging toward her destiny. Come on, shout. Strength. 
You gotta press beyond measure. You gotta press beyond the flesh. I know your back is hurt now. I know your stomach is hurt now. But this is what travail is all about. This is where it counts. This is where we get the victory. you shouting for Whitney the heavenlies is shouting for your family why you shouting for Whitney the heavenlies is shouting for your family the garrison of angels is shouting for your brother he's shouting for your sister he's shouting for your mother's healing he's shouting for your auntie's healing come on somebody what you make happen for others God is making happen for you show up. Open doors, God. Oh, Larry King Lad. Open doors, God. On today, show up. Open doors, God. On CNN News. It's time for your kingdom to come. God, open doors. Let your voice be heard. God, open doors. Let your will be done. Open doors. It's time for America to hear your name called. God, open doors. Show your hand, God, to be a miracle worker. In the name of Jesus, show your hand, God, to be a way maker. Show your hand, God, to be a creator. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, do it now, God. In the name of Jesus, take possession. In the name of Jesus, over the airways. In Jesus' name, oh, God, push the gospel. Oh, God, 
Lift up your name. Oh God, let your kingdom come now. Keep your mouth moving. Keep your mouth moving. Keep your mouth moving. Keep your mouth moving. If you're not praying in tongues, you praise him. But keep your mouth moving. Oh Shakabosa. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell him to give it to us. Give us his prayer assignment. Give it to us. We didn't come in here for us. We came in here for him. We came to pick up the assignment. Come on, Zion. Oh God, We pray, God, we pray for Europe. There's a revival dropping in Europe. God, you speak it now. We pull the revival down in Europe. There's a changing of the spiritual God. God, you sin in a wind. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Just begin to say Europe and speak in tongues. Just begin to say Europe and cry out to God. Just begin to say Europe and praise God. Every spirit of the occult, every spirit of the occult, we break it in the name of Jesus from generation to generation. Every spirit of witchcraft, we break it in the name of Jesus. We break it now in the name of Jesus. We speak it in your name, God, that you allow revival to take over Europe now in the name of Jesus. Father, I see it coming. Father, I hear the sound. I hear the sound of a rushing wind. Father in Russia, in the Bacassette Bahaya, after in Russia, in the Bacassette de la Behette, it's the Russian revival, in the Bacassette de la Behette, in the Bacassette, in the Bacassette de la Behette, 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 in the Bac
People of God, people of God, let me tell you what I hear in the spirit now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is an anointing being stirred right now. There is an anointing being stirred right now. Think it not strange that Bishop Duncan William has been here as many times as he has. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying today that there is an anointing that is being charged in our direction from Africa today. There is an anointing that will charge us today to another level of prayer to the very point that when people walk in this building after today it will feel as if they are in another country for the Lord says today I strip this prayer from the sign of America and I take it international people will come through the door and feel as if they are in another country for the Lord has lifted us today out of America and he has lifted us into another nation we will no longer pray the same there is another level that imparts us today if you want it for the next 60 seconds it is a young breaking anointing it is a power stripping anointing it is anointing that people that operate in witchcraft shall be afraid of you everybody in this place begin to travail because today the Lord will change your tongues today the Lord will change your tongues he will increase the power of your tongues come on for the next 60 seconds let's leave America let's go to the nations let's
come on receive it receive it receive it Give it to us, God. A mind blowing anointing. A mind blowing anointing. A mind blowing anointing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A matchless anointing. A matchless power. A matchless authority. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How many want it? Is there anybody that wanted besides me? A matchless anointing. A mind blowing anointing. An authority anointing her. Hold up, and anointing for the enemy obeys your very presence. Hold up, 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 the power to speak it up and it come to pass before our very eyes in the name of Jesus the power to speak it up and limbs would grow the power to speak it up and blinded eyes would come open the power to speak it up and you would replace organs that have been taken out in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus a mind blowing or nothing in the name of Jesus a matchless power in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus yes Lord Jesus yes Lord Jesus that's why we seek you that's why we seek you that's why we, that's why we come after you oh my shy oh my God I love you 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 Oh my God, I love you. 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 Oh 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 God, I love you. 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 I love you today because I know your power. I love you today because I know your ability. I love you today because I know you can fail. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. 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 Obia sira na mahe, Obia sata na bokusha na mahe. Kira da 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 bora na bokusha na mahe da bora. Yere bora na bokusha na mahe na bora na bokusha na bora 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 na
God is speaking. God is speaking. God is speaking. He's bringing something back in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. About seven or eight years ago, when I started this prayer, thank you, Jesus. It was just me and one or two other people. Sister Catherine started out with me. Sister Tisha is going to be with the Lord now. And I hear that spirit. And I travailed in prayer for two and a half years. And the prayer didn't seem like it wouldn't break. And I kept praying. And I kept praying. And I remember when Pastor put us on a fast. And I was sitting in the second seat about where you are right now, Brother Reuben. And I was laid over because I couldn't even hardly sit up. It put us on seven days with just water. And I began to ask the Lord, why won't it break? And he said this to me, and I heard him say this again this morning, a few minutes ago. He said, you're doing this like I've called you to an event, but I've called you to a lifestyle. And I hear the Lord this morning saying, I'm ready to take you the realms that you have never seen in prayer. Hey, glory. But every person in this building today Jesus. have got to accept the yes, Lord. Yes. 
that this is not something that I'm coming to for a season. And I'm coming until God make my marriage better. I'm coming until God heal my body. I'm coming until we got to decide today, you do, that God, this is a lifestyle. Oh, I don't hear nobody saying nothing like that. I don't hear nobody saying nothing like that. I don't hear nobody saying that. Which means, which means, God, you called me to this. This is a mantle that you're putting on my life. And you called me to this until you called me home. You called me to a lifestyle of prayer. I'm a praying woman. I'm a praying man. This is what my anointing is. This is what my greatest call is. Because this is how I would get the victory every time. I see some of y'all getting it. I see some of y'all getting it. But you better turn around and tell somebody, this is what I do for a living. This is what I do for a living. Oh no, you better mean what you're saying. This is what I do for a living. Now turn back around and say, I pray for a living. I pray for a living. I pray for a living. And start shouting out of your belly. God gotta take you. He wanna take you to another.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you for your presence. You're in this building today and you told the Lord yes to prayer. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to think about why you have your hand raised. Because there are levels that I feel the Lord taking me into. And while your hand is raised, and I know we used to doing this, Somebody ask you to make a commitment and we jump in lines and we say stuff, but I promise you this time, if you raise your hand and you lie to the Holy Ghost, he will give you a permanent reason to pray. He will give you a permanent reason to pray and you will be praying in sorrow. Because the call to prayer is the most serious call of the kingdom. It's a bigger responsibility than preaching because anybody can preach. Anybody can prophesy. The Bible said that demons can do signs and miracles. But the reason why the spirit of prayer is a direct call from God to God because it is the only operation that purifies the vessel while you're doing it. You got liars and cheaters that can preach the gospel and never be changed by the words that they preach. You got people that are gifted to prophesy and never be converted by their own prophecies. But you can't pray and be committed to pray and God not begin to purify the vessel. And that's why people don't pray. That's why when you say pray, in most churches, you got five or six people that they call the intercessors out of a church that's got 10,000. Because prayer will, prayer will purify your mind. Prayer will gut your soul out. Prayer will birth a yes in you to God that you cannot reverse. Prayer will cause you to put it down and never pick it up again. Prayer is the thing that goes in like a laser surgery and it removes the thing that hinders God. Prayer is the thing that fights against the hand of the Amalekite, the hand that stops the movement of God in your life. And that's why the enemy try to make us see it as an event. And that's why he try to, Pastor Reuben, make us associated with people. But I came when I hear somebody say, well, I, I, I might come to prayer next week as prophet's going to be there. I came when you weren't here. I came when wasn't nobody here. I was, I was committed. I was committed when there was times that I pulled up outside. And the church was still locked up. 
and the deacon wasn't even here to open the church and I remember it was a snowstorm and I went to pull off and the Holy Ghost said I've called you to this place and he made me get out of my car in the snow and I held on to the rack, to the fence, to that gate that was pulled down, that silver gate. And I held on to that gate for two hours in the cold and I prayed. I came in here days and prayed in the winter time when I didn't have no heat on. I came in here and prayed when they didn't turn the microphone system on. Oh, it's blessed now. I came in here and prayed when there wasn't nobody in here but me. Because what I said yes to God, I didn't come if you came. God is trying to use us. We are peculiar people. And what I really think, I think you really don't know how special this is. Because I think you think people doing this all over the world. I've traveled. I've been to churches. We have something that is very unusual. We have something that is incredibly powerful. Neither we can become stagnated in the pride of what we have. If we can push forward to get all that God has for us. And that takes a people who says it's my lifestyle. Who says I come to Tuesday prayer because I'm called. <laughs> here because I'm called for what seven years now seven and a half years because I'm called because I decided that I've seen my greatest victories not if you come because there's days I've come and you weren't here. There are months that I've come and you weren't here. But I decided that this was my calling. I'm called to pray before I do anything. If I quit everything, I could never quit praying. I could never quit praying. It's my life. It's how I live. It's how I survive. And God is looking. He's in search. I feel the wound of the Spirit. I can feel the passion of the Holy Ghost. I really can. I can feel the burden of the Lord calling some people to make it a lifestyle. Not that I come to prayer because I'm in trouble. Because as long as you live, you're going to have some trouble. That can't be the reason why you come. That can't be the reason why you come. I come to prayer because, you know, I, I'm, I'm really going through something right now. When are we going to get to the point where we come to prayer because
being in a begging line. I'm going to always have some trouble. But I want to live so God can use me. See, I can't get nobody to say amen right there. When are we going to get to that place? I said, come on, everybody, and pray for your families, and we have fits. I said, come on, everybody, and pray for your families, for your brothers, for your sisters. We have fits. When I said, come on, everybody, and pray for the nations, we act like we don't know what we're talking about. When I call out people's names that are not related to you, it's because the assignment of prayer has to go beyond you. Prayer has got to be your lifelong crusade. Your job is to provoke as many people as you can to pray. You ought to be on a crusade to get people to come to pray. Because the more people to pray, the more the hand of the enemy is stopped and hindered. His plans are canceled. His contracts are canceled. His assignments are aborted in its state of incubation. Stuff that he hasn't even birthed out yet. We go in and we get it. We have cut him off this day. You don't hit me on you cut him off. I don't have time. Something's taking place in the realm of the spirit. And it has my name on it. And I don't know about you, but I'm going all the way. Somebody said all the way. I'm not I'm not coming to church and stopping. And that's what I heard the Lord saying to me today. When I began to pray, and Sister Catherine began to pray, and I just felt the fervor of the Lord. And I heard him talking to me. And he started saying to me, be careful that you don't bring people to pray. And then don't make them pray. And I'm not talking about this patty cake 10 minutes stuff. That's why when I took the microphone from Catherine and I got ready to, to, to teach and the Holy Ghost said no. He said because it's time to pray. It's time to break through in prayer. It's time to go hours in prayer. No, you're not hearing me. I wish I heard somebody hear me. Something has changed in the spirit. I feel it and I know it. I sense it. And this time it ain't the prayer revival. It's the call of the eternal prayer warriors. Something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said longevity in prayer. Mother, we ain't going to get nowhere with no, with no one hour prayer. We ain't going to break no yokes with no 15 minutes. We ain't going to do no damage to the devil's kingdom with 20 minutes. And then when you get tired, and you feel like you're getting tired, then the person that's praying just said, well, let me go and let them stop because they're getting, they getting tired. You're going to pray till your tongue come out. You're going to pray till you bent over. You're going to pray till you can't stand up. You touch your neighbor and say, prayer is no more playing. We ain't going to play pray. We're going to pray pray. Because that's how you get it done. The fervent, effectual prayer. The fervent, effectual prayer means to the boiling point 
until it boils over. Those are the kind of prayers that the devil is afraid of. He ain't afraid of our 15 minutes. He ain't afraid of you slapping your hands together and, and having a few tears coming down your face. And th- That ain't no breakthrough. That's a breaking up, but that ain't a breakthrough. A breakthrough is when you cry and come on through yours. And you tap the, sp- you tap the spirit of darkness for somebody else. Then you done pray through. Tell somebody that's what praying through is. Praying through is when you you cry through yours and you get on the other side of your situation where you hear your spirit saying it's all right. And you pick up somebody else in the spirit. You pick up your neighbor. You pick up your boss. You pick up somebody that's dying of cancer. You pick up somebody that's got AIDS. You pick up a prayer assignment. That's when you pray through. Touch three people and say, it's time to pray through. It's time to pray through. You better start walking. Your assignment this week. Your assignment this week. And I'm not kidding. You better start walking. You better get you some tennis shoes. You better get you to a gym. You better start walking around the block 10 to 10, 15 times. Because you're going to need your strength when you come in here. Because it takes strength to pray. The Bible said, when Zion travailed, she brought forth. Like a woman having a baby. She get to that point. And you say, I can't, I can't push no more. But you gotta push. Even though everything in you saying you can't, you gotta push. If you're gonna cause what's in you to live. There are some things, there are some people. There are some situations that God have connected you with that are not going to break because they are your prayer assignments. He has called you to pray until the stronghold is broken. Yes, I will, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's called you to pray until the stronghold is broken. And next week, we're going after strongholds. Okay, y'all, y'all. I just wish I had somebody to go with me. Get your prayer list. All week long, get your prayer list. Because we're going to pray through. There's some people that's going to be instantly freed. Instantly delivered. God can and he will. I feel this in the Holy Spirit. He is going to break the stronghold. All I need is one witness. We do not want Zion to be healed slightly. We want Zion to be made whole. Made whole. Somebody said made whole. How many believe it today? How many believe it today? Seven. We're not going to stop. Seven. I want you to write this down if you're in your seats. If you're not, 
can go to your seats. I want you to pray about seven people. Seven. Write this down. Now start creating prayer bands. Seven people that I want you to pray that would commit to prayer with you. And they are part of your prayer band. Seven people. Seven people that will commit to come to prayer and they are a part of your prayer band. I'm gonna tell them I have, I have two people. I need you to be a part of my prayer band and come with me to Tuesday prayer. Because when I call for the prayer bands, if you ain't got but three people, I want you to grab your three people because all of you all are going to begin to have the same prayer list. And when we call for that time of prayer, you're going to grab, go to wherever they are and get to your people. And you're going to lock hands. And you're bringing down strongholds. We ain't playing with the devil. Because he ain't playing with us. He ain't playing with us. And he'll let us come to prayer and get all blessed, Pastor Ruben. But we under somebody else's anointing getting blessed. We're getting blessed because prophetess is here blessing us. We're getting blessed because bishop is here blessing us. But we're getting ready to get breakthrough because we're praying through ourselves. You're going to see results from what God uses you to do. Come on, somebody. Because it's time. This is a season for strongholds. I feel it. The level of the anointing has increased for strongholds. Because I have a zero tolerance for foolishness in the spirit. God is doing something. He's up to something. He's up to something, y'all. I said the Holy Ghost is up to something. God of Oshak. He's moving by his spirit. He's doing a quick work. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing too hard for me. God can do anything but fail. God can do anything but fail he can say he can heal he can I know he will God can do anything but fail I need to know that God can do anything but fail. God can do anything but fail. I tell you, He can save, He can heal. He can, and I know He will. God can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Before we go today, can I give one testimony of somebody that's been coming to the prayer? God's done something supernatural in your life. Let me get a testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Sharon. Sharon Ashurst. I started to come into the prayer in 2000, and you had preached the word of knowledge that when Elizabeth and Mary meet, that something will be birthed. And you talked about your life and how Pan Am shut down when God wanted to do something for you. So I was in the post office for 18 years, and as soon as you started talking about that, everything started happening on my job. And so it went on for a couple of years or whatever. And then when we went down to Megafest, you had called people up for the thousand dollar line. When you touched me, by the time I got back, first I gave a thousand dollars. I did not know that the government had released me. And they had put 5,000 in my bank account when I gave you the thousand. By the time I got back to New York City, they had another check for me for 16000 When you had started talking about... When you had started talking about... Oh, oh boy, it was so many things started happening at one time. When I got back to New York, you started talking about your land, that God had released the papers on your land. When I got back, there was a paper in the mail that God had released me from the PO, and they retired me for me to do, to walk into the ministry. After that, once I got up here, our bishop came. But you had already started prophesying, telling us to go look at houses, and you had already started telling us about the power. But before I go ahead of myself, prophetess, y'all don't understand when she's trying to tell you about, you have the power. When I first came here, I had went to a tent meeting, and my mother was starting to get Alzheimer's. And I brought to the tent, minute, tent meeting, and prophet said, I'm not praying for nobody else. Go back. I got angry. And God said to me, every time that clinic faith opened, you better be there. So I had to come in and still pray and still pray. And he said one day, now you go home and lay hands on your own mother. And now doctors, people, you don't understand. Oh. You don't understand. See, you come in here for prophets to lay hands on you. But God is trying to get you into a place that you can lay hands on your own people and your own family members. And what happened was, now the doctors are confused. They don't even understand what's wrong with my mother. Because when our bishop laid his hands on me about breaking the curses, they asked me at my house, because I have a caregiver at my house. And they asked me, they said, what happened to you at church a couple of weeks ago, I said, why? They said, because whatever happened, your mother got up in the middle of the bed and screamed your name when he was breaking the curses off of me and hit. But then after that, when I went to the threshing floor, I had my cousin right over there, and I was sitting at the table. And I said to her, there's something particular I want to do for prophetess. And I said, God... You're going, you're going to answer this. You're going to let me do it. I don't care how long it takes. When I was at the threshing floor, prophetess turned around and said, those that don't have a t-shirt, stand up. Well, people thought that she was just going to, you know, give away t-shirts. So she turned around and said, now everybody that don't have a t-shirt, you turn around who got $20 and give them the money. Okay. I didn't know that the person that was sitting next to me, she didn't have the money, but she, had the t she didn't have a t-shirt. So I said to her, I'll get you a t-shirt, not knowing that I was getting ready to bless a millionaire. I live in Rochester. The millionaire came to New York stayed in my house a couple of weeks ago to say we're going to go to a certain place and i'm going to teach you 
what you want to know. So she took it, she had taken me under her wing. And I know that God is moving, and we are keepers of the flame. We want prophetess to be here, but she has to go to the nation. And because she's so loyal to prayer, we can't get her released. But we need to be able that when she come back here and when she wants certain things, we should be the ones that's able to give it to her. When she want a jet, she should have a jet. When she want a rose one, she can have a rose one. Because she sacrificed for us and now we need to get in the place. We hung up on $100. We need hundreds and thousands of dollars for her to make her move to where she got to go. So when she's calling you, telling you, come to prayer. This is about we were blessed. New York is blessed to have her. You know how many people want her in Atlanta. They want her all over the world. And God will not will give her them if we don't appreciate. So it's time for us to stop playing. Playing, church. And let's get real so we can push her to where she needs to be. That he's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. All the faith walkers, faith walkers come. These are people who have committed to sow to God every Tuesday. All the faith walkers come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive that. I receive that. God is doing some awesome stuff. Ooh. I receive that I'm going to get a plane. I got to be able to jet. I receive that. Faith walkers come quickly. And every person in this building, don't walk out of here without sowing a seed to God. This is the greatest seed of the week. This is the greatest seed of the week. The Bible said, He that sowed to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. You're not sowing so I can get an offer. I sow just like you. You don't see my tapes out there on the tape table. Because it's the time of sewing. I can do all of that. So don't miss this opportunity. So get a seed in your hand. Every person in this building, get a seed in your hand. Bless you, Pastor. Get a seed in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank God for healing. night and stopped at a restaurant and got something to eat and got food poisoning when I got up this morning I was so sick upstairs Sister Catherine had to get a bucket and put it by the couch and I didn't even think I was gonna be able to make it downstairs and I came down here down the aisle I just could have threw up all the way down the aisle I was breaking sweat I was sick, but I was determined because I heard God tell me earlier this morning, he said, today I want you to pray. I want you to pray. And that's why sometimes, you know, God tell you to do stuff and the enemy try to sideswipe it. 
I was going to pray if I had to lay down and pray. And I was praying and my, my back was hurting, my stomach was hurting. I felt like in between my words I was going to throw up. But you got to be determined to press for and do what God tells you to do. I tell people all the time, I'm going to do what he tells me to do if I die while I'm doing it. Amen, somebody. My baby just said the last thing she did was holler Jesus and spoke in tongues and threw up and passed out and didn't wake up. But I'm going to have a testimony that I obeyed it. Come on, somebody said obedience. Somebody said obedience. And we use a lot of excuses. And I, tell, I used to tell my mentorship class, they brought it back up to me, that an excuse is the skin of the truth, stuff with a lie. Stop using excuses as the reason why you can't obey God. But I would have came to pray if so-and-so had to came and picked me up. Or I wanna, if you got to come like some of the people I see come and sit in that kitchen. When I get here sometime at 10 o'clock at night, people be sitting there over there in the kitchen. People be standing outside already because you got to be determined. If the devil going to make you oversleep, then don't go to sleep. Come on, somebody. Come on here, somebody. Don't go to sleep. You say, well, I'm going to come to prayer, but I may oversleep, then don't go to sleep. Then come already to prayer at 10 o'clock at night. Come at 8 o'clock on Monday night and just sit up in here. Because I'm determined. I'm determined to be found where he tell me to be. Come on, somebody. It's a spot. It's a place. And when the Lord marks a spot for a season in your life, you can't rebel against that. And you can't do it your way. Because your way ain't the way of the Lord. Amen, somebody. How many know the easiest thing for me to do is to get up every Tuesday morning and be praying for y'all? The easiest thing to do is to get up out of my bed and walk up the steps on the second level and go up in my prayer chamber every Tuesday morning at 5 o'clock and just lay out and just be praying for y'all and say, God, bless the prayer. It's easier to do that than to get a plane ticket and get on a plane and fly here and sleep on a couch upstairs. Come on, somebody. And war all night with the enemy. It ain't easy to come down here and pray. Because before I get here, I done already prayed. I done already been in travail. And to come down here and then continue on to do what the Lord has called me to do. It's not an easy task. But it's a doable task when you want to do it. I said all the time, people do what they want to do. Somebody told you they'll give you a million dollars if you walk from here to Manhattan. You'll be walking now. Walking and wouldn't want no juice. Stop one second. People say, you thirsty? No, honey, I can make it. I would be all right. My daddy is a person that he, 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 he gets sick and been going through some physical challenges. And, and every time he, he get real sick and they had to take him to the hospital. And, and I, they said, need a daddy really sick. I said, I'm going to send him some money. I sent him some money. He sat straight up and started talking. I straight up and start talking. He's supposed to be going into surgery. And Kathy said, you worry about that? I said, no, I'm going to write him a $10,000 check and say, see this when you open your eyes. If you don't come back, we shall spend it. And he will return. <laughs> that's, that's, he just gets healed. He can be, I don't feel good and just weeping and crying and carrying on. And I write him a check. Go get him in suits, and he was in the hospital. He had a stroke, and um, I'm telling you, people do what they want to do. He had had a stroke in the hospital, a severe stroke, and he in the hospital. And I had to go to the store to get him pajamas. I mean, he had gone blind in his left eye. His stroke was so bad, and I went to get him pajamas, and I had to go and to fly to Chicago and. And I was going to see him and they said, well, why are you coming from the airport? Daddy needs some more pajamas. So I went to pick him up some pajamas. And he, I, they call, I called back to the hospital and he was like, I want burgundy and navy blue pajamas or something he was saying. And so when I got to the hospital, he was like, well, what kind of pajamas did you bring me? And I said, well, I bought you what they had. He said, well, I said I want burgundy. I said, well, I'm going to hold them up to your blind eye and you can call them whatever color you want them to be. And the nurse come to get him up to walk him, to work him out. And he gets up 
And this is a spirit that don't want to put on house shoes. He got on alligator shoes. Burgundy alligator shoes with the burgundy check it and just cologne and all. And I said, where are you going? I don't want to wear no house shoes. I want to wear, and then he put on the navy blue pajamas and he got on navy blue alligator shoes going down the hospital corridor with a robe on and alligator shoes on and sliding one foot. People do what they want to do. You supposed to be sick. You done had a stroke. You thinking, God, you can't slide your foot. And you want to put the broke, the twisted foot in an alligator shoe. And want all his rings on. And cologne. The nurses came in, they said, your daddy is a hot mess. And he down there just preaching to everybody. He ain't sick. He ain't sick. He talking to the rest of the people. God is a healer. God going to heal you. And he came on back to the room and said, can you leave me a little change? I said, where are you going? Why do you need some money? You are in the hospital. What, what do you need? People will do what they want to do. You give them a reason. And they'll do what they want to do. Amen, somebody. When God says pray, if you really want to pray, you're going to pray. I don't care what nobody says. You're going to come to pray if you have to walk. Come on, somebody. You're going to catch a taxi. You're going to put a budget in your paycheck that said, this is my taxi money for prayer, and I don't break it for nobody. Amen, somebody. That's what I'm talking about, saints. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we got we to gotta have a joy about what we do. I don't do this begrudgingly. It's a joy to pray. It's a joy to know what I know what the devil don't know. It's a joy to know what I got heads up on. And I'm around the corner before he ever get to the corner. It's a joy to know that if he sneak up on me, I can bind him. I can lock his hands and his feet and shut him down. Come on, somebody. That's walking with some power. When you know that the devil, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. That you know that out of your mouth, you can rebuke him in the name of Jesus and shut him down in a minute. Come on here, somebody. That you can speak to your future. That you can bind up the lion spirit from your past. You can command your presence to walk in victory. You can stabilize your thought pattern. Oh, come on, somebody. You can speak healing to your own body. You can pray till the curse is broken. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's a gift from God. You ought to thank God right now. He called you to pray. It's a gift from God. It's a precious gift. Woo. I'm in control of my destiny. I control my destiny. I control my destiny. Come on. Man. You handed this to me, but this, this is your testimony, so I, I don't know what this is. So, my son was murdered in um, April, and um, I started coming to prayer, coming back to prayer in May. I've been coming every Tuesday since um, May and um, when I started coming to prayer they only had one person in in custody and he wouldn't snitch on his partners and um, so I started praying and asking God to allow the police to apprehend the trigger puller so on a Tuesday morning while I was here the police was calling me to say that they knew who the trigger puller was and that they got him. So he got locked up on a Tuesday morning while I was here. So I kept coming to prayer because I didn't feel, I didn't feel led to stop coming to prayer. So I kept coming and I kept praying and I kept praying God. And on the following Tuesday came, they arrested a young lady, 18 years old. She was the driver. I didn't even know it was a third person that was involved. And she was locked up on a Tuesday morning while I was here. But the highlight of the whole testimony was the Lord wouldn't allow me to give the testimony because he had to do something in me. Because I couldn't get excited because these people were apprehended. I couldn't get excited because they were thrown in jail. One of my girlfriends called me and said, I said, you know what, they got him, they got him. You know, I'm, I had just checked in the hotel and I said, they got him. 
And I said, um, I said, dang, me and my, we was just tripping about it. And so my girlfriend is a missionary in Baltimore, and she said, well, now you need to pray that God will save their soul. And I got so angry at her for saying that. It was like she spoiled the whole moment. And I was like ready to hang up on her. And, I, and then when I got off the phone, I said, God, that is so wrong. That is not right for me to feel like that, even though they took my son. That's not right for me to feel like that. And that Tuesday, you was preaching about how God would take want to expose your wickedness to you. And so I, I understood why it wasn't time for me to give this testimony. So then I just started saying, God, I want you to save them. Now that you arrested them, arrest them in the spirit. I want you to save them. I want you to convict them until they are, are turning the jails upside down. Because what's happening, prophet, is in my city, the, the gangs are taking over. It's an academic going on in Baltimore where they are, where they got gangs are rising up on every part of Baltimore. And I'm the, inside of our jails, in the jail cells, they are killing our guards. The, the gangs are sitting there writing hit lists on the police and the, the, the authorities inside the jail. But I said, God, the people that killed my son, I want you to convict them. I want you to arrest them in the spirit until they are raising up a revival inside of the jail. And that's when I knew that God had delivered me. I knew when I could pray for the people that shot my son in the head and took him out of here. I said, God, I want you to break. I want you to break them. You arrested them in the natural. Now arrest them in the spirit. Somebody give God a praise. Come on, somebody give God a praise. Because that that's a how many of y'all can say that? That takes a God. That takes a God. That takes a God to bring a person to that level of prayer that they can say, God, I forgive them. And I save them. Arrest them in the spirit. I'm telling you, there are miracle testimonies that we, we have not even heard. Just the letters and the things that have happened because prayer doesn't just change things. It changes everything. It really does. Somebody said, well, how can you say that? Because when you pray, it invokes the presence of God. And whenever his presence shows up, things change. Things change. Somebody get your seed in your hand. Get your seed in your hand. Get your seed in your hand. And lift it up to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the prayer today. We thank you for the next level of prayer. We thank you for stabilizing us in prayer. We thank you for our new call to pray. We thank you, Lord, because today, prayer is no longer an event. But prayer is our lifestyle. Father, we thank you for the commitment. And we're honored that you called us to this. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray that you would strengthen us to finish our course with joy. Father, I pray that you would strengthen our bodies and strengthen our minds and fortify us for the task that we will not get weary in our journey. Father, I pray that you would give us supernatural strength to bombard heaven and to send a rage against the enemy's territory. And we thank you for victory now. And now we pray that the seed that has been sown in prayer would reap a harvest and would rain down terror on the enemy's head. Because the seed that we're planting in prayer is to keep the power of prayer alive. And so Father, let this seed bruise his head. Let this seed break the back of Satan. Let this seed cut off his head and throw it over the wall. In Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for the blood stain banner that covers every person in this building. We thank you, Lord, because we apply the blood from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, we send them out of here with a garrison of angels around them and camped around their cars, around their person, to protect and do battle on their behalf. In Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you because we are the people that you have retained with the victories in your hand. And for that, we give you praise and we tell you thank you. 
Somebody give him a praise and tell him thank you. Somebody give him a praise and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Don't forget, I want everybody in this building that's going to be attending the prayer. I want you to wear your white t-shirts. That's what the Lord has given us. And if you just now come into the prayer and you weren't here during the time that the Lord spoke that request, we're asking that you would honor that request, that you would go out and get a plain white t-shirt, no writing on it, no things pasted on it, no six flags on it, and, and nothing else a plain white t-shirt because it stands for unity and we don't understand why the Lord tells us to do things but neither did the captain that understood when the prophet said go and dip seven times in the muddy water it didn't make no sense but that was the word of the Lord amen somebody and it may not make no sense to you and it may be an inconvenience to you but we got to learn how to obey God in small things and so every person in here, when you come back next week, and I know I see some of you all, you have your threshing floor t-shirts on. That's not what he said. He said plain white. Plain white. Turn around and touch three people and say, he said plain white. And tell them there's a reason why he said it. We have our prayer assignments. And I want you to be praying and asking God to give you what it is you need to pray for. Because we ain't praying no more. I ain't playing with the devil. I ain't never played with him, but I'm willing to play now. Because he don't went to another level. Come on, somebody. While we still sitting here in this level, Satan done went to another level. He pulling up stuff that we ain't never seen before. And we got to be a ready people. And we got to be a people on assignment. And I'm like the sister, the Lord got me here for a reason. Come on, somebody. He keeps pulling me back to this place for a reason. When I want to quit, I can't quit. Come on, somebody. When I want to say I'm tired, I can't quit. He got me here in your presence for a reason. It's a timing and a season. Don't take it for granted. Because other people wish they had it. They calling me all over the country. Can you just fly here every week? We'll pay you. We'll give you a big offering. Can you just come and do that, that New York prayer thing here at our church? But that ain't what he said. Come on, somebody. We're privileged to be chosen of the Lord. And you ought to thank him. You ought to thank him. I say you ought to thank him. You ought to thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you coming, giving your seat off an elder boy? I'm going to give you a seat off. I want to give you some prayer assignments. I want you to be praying for us this week. We're doing some things on the property we have some people coming to install some things and just a lot going on right now with the property they're just the favor of God I can't even begin to tell you but women it won't be long we'll have our own women's spa and prayer retreat amen the people that came to do the work on the property they said we feel like the Queen of Sheba, when she came to see Solomon's temple, they say, you can't even describe this because it was more than what we thought. And they pulled up on the property. They was like, my God, this is a God thing. Couldn't nobody do this but God. I'm telling y'all, I can't wait till you see it. I can't wait till you see it. And we, we're making some plans and some things. And, and I'm, I'm planning a, a, a trip for my mentorship class that I'm teaching in um, Atlanta to take them down on a bus and I want to plan a trip for the prayer where we can probably leave you know maybe on a Thursday night or something like that and take a couple of buses down and let y'all walk all over that property 
and we spend a couple of days and pray all over the property and walk all over the property and have lunch out there and bring blankets and just lay out on the grounds and just let the intercessors saturate the grounds. Amen, somebody. Because I'm telling you, God is out there. I, I had a little experience the other day. A man came up on his boat, elder boy, and I got up early one morning and I looked out and he was coming up around the thing. And I said, I waited all my life to say this. I said, get off my property. Hey! Get on off of here. You know, we didn't we didn't live next door to Buki them all our life. We ain't never had to holler and tell nobody that because your property was their property. Y'all's house was set almost on the same property. And he was just fishing in his little boat and he came on around that. I said, hey! Hey! Go on off here! The private property! Go on off my property! And he had to turn his boat around and get on up and get! That felt good. I stood out there in my pajamas and just hollered all out. Put my robe on and walked on out there on the deck, on the fishing deck, and looked out over all that water and just watched him go on up the river. Get on out of here. God is good, ain't he? See, he can't give us none. We just show out as soon as he give it to us. That's why it takes him so long to give it to us. He's got to purge all that out of us. Cause I could have let that man go and fish. It wouldn't have killed me. And he coming after all that. That's why he give you stuff so he can show you that unpurged side. Amen. <laughs> Y'all praying for me? He ain't through with me yet. I could have let that man fish. Get that, that thing down in you. So all that un, unresolved stuff. Get on out of here. And I felt bad. So I could have let that man fish. It wasn't going to hurt me. Just get one fish. But God is so good. We got... We got trout, we got catfish, we got, we got redfish, we got, oh my God. It, 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 it's, it's so beautiful. And I said, when the women come out here, the contractor came out, the architect came out last week, and we actually stood in the places. And the first thing that we're going to build, Elder Board, is a threshing floor. And that's the first thing that we're going to build. So we're already talking about the design of it and we've already picked out the spot of where it's going to sit on the property and, and, and adjacent to where the hotel is going to sit. And the first thing we're going to build is get the threshing floor up so you all can come down by bus and we bless the grounds and, and then we got to come back and we got to consecrate the threshing floor and that's the first thing that's going up so the lord is doing some awesome awesome things i'm telling you this is this is breakthrough season this is